Hello and welcome to the uh, track, uh, tracking website users buff. Um, this buff will be mostly about the social and technical limitations about um, tracking website users. I myself, I'm Martin Sobelhelas from the, um, well, I'm working with the website team. I'm uh, I myself am a member of the uh, Debian system administrators team and also still a bit um, working within the listmaster team but not involved that much anymore. Um, during last year's um, webmaster team meeting or web team meeting we had in Vienna in December, uh, besides talking about the website redesign, we also had, uh, we started some discussions about um, which content to move from the wiki to the website and uh, vice versa. So um, we wondered um, which effect will that have to the web pages if we start moving content around, if we start moving content around within the web page and not only moving content from the wiki to the to, to the web page. Um, and we very fast came up with um, social limitations on, on that problem. What shall we do? What can we do? What, what things sh we should not do about that? Um, our current sta status is we have very, very few informations about uh, our website users. The only thing I, I am currently aware of is um, the link over there where we have um, the, web, uh, the, the web logs from one of the triple W mirrors um, in some sort anonymized, so we just only get the, the link um, from the web page and uh, the account of um, pages, uh, the account of um, views of that, uh, of that specific um, page. Um, and actually, we cannot tell anything at the moment about how many page impressions do we have per day. How, ma how many, um, uh, if, if we have a release, is there any difference um, on the, uh, is a user, uh, do, we have, uh, do we expect a user peak or if we, if we change content on the, on the main page, what will happen uh, to the traffic of the web page then? Um, and we started thinking about what we can do. Um, I think the easiest thing is having something like WebUlizer or AV stats uh, running on the web logs. But um, uh, is that, uh, as I think it's, it's a big s a social problem um, if you, uh, if you start, um, uh, if you start, uh, Gather, yeah, gathering all this information to, and uh, should this information be public and available and so on and so on. Um, well, we would like to see how many users we have on the web page. Um, we, would, uh, we would like to see the effects when starting moving content around within the web page, from the wiki to the web page and vice versa. Um, and there's also interest, especially for the translators, to see if there's co uh, content on the web page uh, not yet translated. Um, for example, let's say from, from India or wherever, and uh, a, a page viewed quite often from the Indian developers or the in Indian website users. Um, so we could start prioritizing um, um, translations. Um, so we get those pages which are quite often viewed but not uh, yet translated, um, translated before other pages which are not that common used. So for example, Debian news items from 2002 are probably not that much viewed than let's say the www.debian.org slash devel page, something like that. Uh, and we would like to, to gather information about that, if it's helpful to, um, 
to have um, uh, some pages translated with a higher priority. Um, what we could do is, well, the obvious things, we could start analyzing the Apache log files. Um, nowadays, all the web mirrors are on Debian.org or DSA maintained hardware, so we can easily get the, um, uh, the Apache logs. Um, other techniques that could be done is having a, a, some sort of um, icon, uh, not icon, uh, one by one pixel uh, served uh, via CGI script or whatever to gather information also about the, uh, um, for example, about um, user agents uh, and so on. And mostly of that can also be done uh, using JavaScript. Um, like some sort of AJAX request, for example, um, we then would also get information about the um, um, screen size of users uh, and other different things. The problem is, do we want those informations? If yes, uh, which, uh, which social limitations are we facing with? Um, yeah, and that's actually the thing I would like to discuss here in this BOF so we can um, gather information and then the web team can use this information for um, setting up some sort of tracking. I think, yeah. And um, sh the obvious question is, should we track, start tracking at all? And if yes, uh, do we want the tracking information public available to all users? Or is that only something the website team should, uh, be, view, uh, should be viewing? Yeah. I think would, uh, I would like to discuss that with, with all of you here, uh, in here. Yeah, but the persons on the, uh, on the streams want to hear the question as well. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, information... Wait. Yeah. Uh, information that you want to gather uh, will be probably used for uh, in, uh, making user experience better. So uh, information you gather will help you to better organize your website and... Uh, in that sense, uh, I think that uh, that kind of information gathering can be useful. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, if I use the internet and if I make a request to your site, uh, as soon as my request uh, leaves my computer, it's not private anymore. So this is, this is something that uh, you can't call private data anymore, mm -hmm. I think. And, uh, that is the reason I think that there is nothing wrong in uh, gathering that kind of data if it will be used for uh, increasing user experience. Uh, so this is my two cents. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have some kind of personal experience because we introduced some tracking technique at the institution I'm working for. Um, it's a German-based institution, so it, I'm not sure how well, how well you, uh, how well you that experience is, but we had major difficulties with privacy issues when we started to doing this. We had, I think, three lawyers writing some kind of privacy statement um, which we just put somewhere on our website. The lawyer said it would be okay, but we needed to pu publish that. So um, if we need to do something similar for the Debian project, um, it might be a little bit more difficult um, because we, we might also add other um, sub-projects or things like List, uh, list stuff or things to our global privacy statement on our mm -hmm. web page. So that's, but 
I'd really like to see something like that. Um, you were talking about do we actually track? <coughs> sorry, do do we actually track, or should we actually track individual users, or should we just gather statistics about the site usage? Um, and there's a big difference between the two. Do we actually have a use case at this point in time where we actually need to um, to track individuals or individual users? For all the cases you've given so far, just statistical analysis of the site would be sufficient. If we don't actually have a use case for doing it, why, why even spend the time and effort doing it? Uh, you've, you've already stated from a statistical point of view that it would be good so we could see what uh, translations need to happen and so on. That is implying we haven't got enough bandwidth in workload to cope with what we need to do now. Why, why, wait, why make more work for ourselves? Just give it to, can you then just give it to Razab? Yep. Um, one of the reasons for why we want to track or what useful things that might come out if we are tracking users is there's usually a lot of people complaining about the bad navigation and we might want to have input on how we can improve this. And if we know what paths people go and which directions they follow to get to the information they need, we can get actual information out from that, how to improve on that level. And that's one of the main reasons why tracking users is useful for us, to improve the navigation part. The, the idea is not to have one-to-one -one mapping um, between uh, on, on, in the log files, but to have some sort of anonymized IP or however we on, on the DSA side probably on, in the end or whom, whomever is going to implement that, um, uh, we, we, uh, we will implement some sort of anonymization on the, uh, on the log files. But um, as uh, Rhonda already said, um, tracking the paths a person takes over the website and, for example, merging content from, uh, from two pages into one because all, 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 mostly all persons um, viewed both pages, for example, merging the content into one page would make it one click, click less in the end. Uh, okay, so uh, this will be boring to Zobel because I told him <laughs> over lunch. <laughs> but in general, uh, w previously we already had a webalyzer analysis on Clacker Debian org when it was 3W's Debian org. Uh, that gave way to, I don't know, BitRot or something. <laughs> so we don't, don't have it anymore. So as far as statistical analysis, I don't think there's any downside to it. Uh, and you, we could even uh, if resources permit, uh, publish uh, the results, you know, so tell the users what we gathered from the logs about them. Uh, and uh, as far as the tracking goes, uh, there's one use case uh, where uh, this is something uh, some, uh, somewhat anecdotal, but uh, I think uh, others, other people have told me they have the same experience, so I'm going to lay it out. Uh, you go to a website, uh, you can't find what you're lo looking for, for example, at uh, www.debian.org. Uh, then you go back to Google, and then you search for a string uh, that leads you back into the Debian.org domain, but at the right place. So uh, if we had already, uh, already, uh, originally, when the user was at www, set a simple tracking cookie. Uh, so uh, no actual information is relayed uh, other than the existence of this cookie. And then when we receive back that user on the website, uh, for example, securitydebian.org or packagesdebian.org, then we know, oh, this user was uh, in this session already at one of our other websites, but did not come with a refer field that said he was linked here directly. So this is uh, a useful bit of information. We don't have to, um, obviously, we don't want to keep this information, where was the user and spying on them and whatever, but the essential component was our navigation was broken. 
we did not relay this user through li internal links uh, to our website because we cannot verify it in the refer field because the refer field says Google or it says Yahoo or it says Bing or whatever. Or it says, I don't know, random forum where some other user who had found the same solution backlinked it in the right place in our hierarchy. So that sounds like a one, uh, one uh, simple usage of a tracking cookie and a very trivial tracking cookie. No extra information such as PHP sessions and whatever. Uh, Okay, so if you think that collecting statistics or tracking users would be useful for you, then you probably should, we probably should do it and figure out how to do it. So that answers, at least from my point of view, with no hat on the question of whether at all you should do it. One of the things I would like to see in the setup, however, is that privacy is conserved in the sense that nobody should ever be able to figure out whether or not I have visited a website and certainly not which sites I personally have visited after the fact. So collect the data, run some kind of post-processing on them and then work on that data. And if we did the anonymizing step right, then there's no reason not to publish that data because somebody might be able to do something useful with it. So collect the data, anonymize it, and publish it, and then do the put whatever kind of statistics or whatever you want to do with it on that data. Do you want to direct on that, or um, may I pass the microphone to? Someone mentioned. Somebody previously mentioned a privacy statement. Uh, modern modern day web websites are powered by lawyers, as we noticed. <laughs> This is a realistic thing. Uh, users uh, have come to learn to uh, expect a privacy statement. In Debian, uh, users, uh, our users who know us, they expect that we won't invade their privacy, so they don't really look for a privacy statement. But uh, it would be okay if we spelled it out. If we told users, okay, we have no financial interest in tracking you and uh, selling you <laughs> the latest version of Debian or whatever. You know, just spell it out. You know, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, s simply have a page that says, okay, we won't do anything e evil because we will do this, this, and this. For example, we will collect, uh, we do collect logs because Apache writes them to disk. Okay, we will not turn off that feature, but uh, these uh, logs will not be sold to adclick.net or whatever it's called, uh, whatever agency. So uh, maybe just spelling out the obvious would be our pr privacy statement. It is obvious to us, but not to random web users who might be alarmed because they read on a random website, uh, pri your privacy is endangered by any cookie or by any log or by anything. You should sit down. <laughs> uh, spelling out the obvious is fine, but then we should not use the existence of this privacy statement to rationalize things that otherwise we wouldn't do like so yeah so it shouldn't be a place where we tell people oh and we are going to be very evil and it's okay because we just told you um, I wonder if uh, some initial um, navigation uh, tracking uh, can already be done with the current logs uh, by tracking IPs and uh, web browser identification strings. Uh, I mean, that won't be totally accurate because obviously you may have like thousands of people behind a NATED address, uh, but it may already give some ideas about some pages that need to be merged. And, and that may be like a first step in the sense that you start getting some information and see and try to use it. And so you kind of validate if, if that information is actually useful and you don't need any privacy statement or anything because that's data we already have. And then from then on, uh, that could be a second step. Obviously, the downside of this is that you do the first crappy step and you never do it properly because it gets like a long path with loads of steps. I think we're back at the uh, the question of 
are we collecting statistics and paths for the sake of it, or do we actually have a genuine use case? Um, if we've got things we want to do, let's go ahead and do them. Um, I'm still trying to, to understand, are we actually trying to say, look, we could do some cool stuff with the statistics to make things better? Or are we saying, I want to make the flow better, I want to merge uh, pages together where um, it's obvious that actually there should be one page, or even split pages up or um, improve our, you know, if you've got a specific task, go and do it. I'm, I don't know, I'm just kind of wary about this, or well, let's just do this globally, we collect loads of information, we, and then we can mine it later. Um, because you'll always find that you've never collected the right information. You're always going to have to collect something slightly different later when you need to do it. So half the time the exercise is pointless. Um, yeah, I'm, I th I'm still, as I say, give it, give it a use case, have a specific task to do with it, and then go and do it. I think um, it's kind of uh, it's uh, to us in, in the web team or <laughs> all guys in the web team like me. Uh, it's kind of obvious what needs to be done because we have all these sorts of uh, 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 a, a diversity of web portals. Because, for example, we have uh, packages Debian org and www Debian org because uh, these aren't the same virtual hosts, so the logs are separate. But uh, and uh, but but really they're one and the same. They're they're, they're the same website as far as uh, Debian user is concerned. They they want uh, the official Debian information and packages Debian org provides official Debian information. Th that's the kind of thing that, that needs to be analyzed. But yeah, uh, definitely. As I said in the first place, we had Webalizer once uh, once before. So statistical analysis first, and then then we can work on that. More questions? Well, one of the things, for example, which annoyed me a bit during the, I think it was Lenny release cycle, we had this big picture on, on, the, on the main page, uh, which used more or less the half of my screen resolution. So do we know anything about the the current screen resolutions of, the, of our website users and could optimize graphics and so on directly to the, let's say, to 50% of our users? Is that an appropriate thing to track or is that tracking too much information? You wanted to comment the same thing I said about <laughs> at lunch? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So well, at, at least we, if yeah, we discuss we it, it uh, yeah, we have to spell it out. If we discuss it in a big uh, group, I think there's more consensus just uh, on <laughs> two <of us. laughs> the two of us. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, 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 you have to, uh, anything we do with the website, uh, accessibility is always in the back of our heads. So, uh, we have to be able to... Uh, any kind of new technology, uh, for, or old technology that we are not using now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, d do we uh, detract from the experience of the lowest common denom denominator user? So if the tracking cookie will not be loaded uh, by a user who doesn't like JavaScript or who uh, uses a, uh, how do you call it, uh, ad block or uh, yeah. no script, no, no script, no script uh, if they actually see all the content and they are not harmed in the process, then there's no real, realistic reason to, to go against it. And uh, for everyone else, it, if it brings a concrete uh, enhancement, that's, that's okay. And, and this, this builds on the, the general ideas ab about what, we, what do we do about the website. For example, uh, one of ex the examples I, I, I promulgated was that we need to have more RSS feeds and readers and to, uh, to be able to integrate, for example, the uh, the web page uh, on the official website about the Spark port should have an RSS feed from the Spark mailing list so as to integrate better these things. So, uh, and if we do this with uh, an iframe, we need to be able to know that uh, does anyone still have a browser that doesn't support iframes at all? So if they see a giant gaping hole in, in where they, they're supposed to see something, some content, that's a bad thing. 
that would be a bad thing, so we shouldn't do that, and we should instead do some other technical measure that accomplishes the same thing, but... Yeah, like, also like um, uh, um, collecting information, statistical information about uh, browsers. Yeah. No more comments, questions on the whole topic? Ah, oh, Paul. <laughs> so, the uh, Debian Wiki publishes IP addresses of everyone who changes a page uh, on the history. Yes. Um, it's not that visible, but it's there. The other thing is that the Wiki has several statistic pages about uh, which pages are the most popular and stuff like that? Uh, which pages are the most edited and all that sort of thing? I'm not sure the URLs right now, but those pages are there. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about here is the publicity implications of this sort of a thing happening. Um, I'm just imagining a slash dot headline, Debian starts tracking users or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm? Well, in that case, we might really publish some privacy statement and hope that the headline on Slashdot is Debian publish privacy statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my point is that we need to manage that release <laughs> and make sure that it's positive rather than negative. Uh, Wiki makes things easier, uh, and here too, uh, the page history is uh, clickably uh, available uh, directly from the same page. Uh, uh, all of our changes to the main website are logged into a version control system that has a web front end. So basically, we're doing already the same uh, as far as that privacy aspect. You know, who did what, when, and you know, tracking those users, uh, actually publicly tracking them and. Uh, t telling everyone when they edited the website and stuff. So, uh, Wiki unobfuscates that process. Now it's hidden in a CVS repository, so you have probably 15 clicks from the website, from the main <laughs> site, but it's there. So, so it's kind of, you know, uh, we shouldn't kid ourselves about this uh, information really being private, but uh, exposing it completely may not be, may not be really smart. And we n not even spoke about bugs, Debian Org yet. Bugs? Yeah. I have my own small website where I, uh, you know, look at the Apache logs directly. It's they're small, you know, small enough. And it's kind of interesting. In the Google searches, it actually includes the search string, and it's interesting to find. Uh, how people find my website searching for combinations of words that, yes, all of those words are on that page. I guess it does fit, but they're obviously not looking for me. Dueling banjos. <laughs> does anyone remember that? <laughs> yes. Dueling banjo banjos. Yes. <laughs> So, more comments? You were saying before that it might, you were saying something about the bug tracking system. I think it might be interesting to track which are the most popular bugs that people are finding <laughs> and looking at the web page for. You want to comment on that? I agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. But isn't the bug tracking system something where we should try to uh, take the privacy even more serious? Because think of um, security-related bugs. <laughs> I'm thinking more general statistics of 
which is the most popular bug, not necessarily re revealing who's looking at that page. Okay. The bug tracking system has an outstanding bug report for like 14 years now. <laughs> Please hide my email address in the web search. Because there's a, a battle of priorities there, uh, two conflicting requests. Uh, one is the request from the social contract. We will not hide problems in any shape or form. We will allow people to comment. So they will they need, need to have access in some form to those email addresses. So you might as well publish them on the web. But then. It's also, uh, it's also a huge privacy issue because uh, an unsuspecting user uses our bug tracking system, reports a bug in good faith, and then we give his email address to a flurry of spam bots that then abuse him for years and years to come. So uh, th that's really a, a use case where pr privacy issues are really huge. And we don't have it fixed. <laughs> you know, there's no fix, really. I'm, I'm not really uh, authoritative, Blars is here, uh, the active member of that team, <laughs> but back when I was uh, you know, involved, uh, the official line was, there is no official line. <laughs> we're not going to change the status quo because uh, this, uh, we were still uh, disadvantaging the old users who had previously posted their email addresses to the bug tracking system and got <laughs> abused. And then the new, uh, the new users are spared, but uh, then again, uh, a spammer could just subscribe to Debian Bugs Dist at least Debian Org, and then harvest all those emails anyway. So it's a multifaceted issue, so uh, <laughs> there is no real solution. Yeah. And, and, and a real hardcore <laughs> privacy issue for actual users. Do you want to directly comment on that? Um, our, our current policy is that, yes, we are publishing their email addresses. We frequently get requests uh, for people, please remove this from, from the, the, your bug logs. And the canned answer we have for that, I didn't write it, but it's, someone did, uh, is that it's already been published, it's already been distributed on multiple mailing lists, uh, removing it from our website probably won't do any good, and it does make responding to the user heart more difficult. And if we can't, you know, if we cannot email, easily email the user and with a reply to their bug, and it it's, makes the uh, bug fixing much more difficult. So it's, it is a trade-off and, you know, some people are requesting, you know, simple obfuscation, which some spammers won't, won't be able to work around, but most spammers will work around so easily that it... And why is it not? Only one spammer has to break through it and then it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's lost. The cause is lost. To you right after him. Coming back to your statement earlier of um, we shouldn't change the status quo because it would disadvantage uh, people who have uh, already had. Come on, we change we change things all the time. We make things better. Should we leave everything as bad as it is? No, we improve things. We, uh, that's not an argument. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Blars' argument was uh, the retort to that question. Because uh, if, if we, uh, the trade-off goes both ways. So if we uh, obfusc obfuscate, uh, we fix one problem, but we create another problem, uh, potentially just as disruptive to the development process. So if the users are harmed by the uh, inability to talk to each other directly, then that's a problem again. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, for the, in general, I, well, so, so there certainly is this trade-off between accessibility of 
contacting the people who submit bugs and the privacy of them and maybe their request not to be available to receive email. Um, for the initial submitter though, we do have an alias submitter like bugs hyphen submitter at the BTS. So it seems to me that at no loss of anything, we could hide the initial submitter's email address. And follow-ups, well, we can email them back saying, well, maybe the page can just say, just so you know, your email address will be public, and then people hopefully understand for the follow-ups. I suppose we could uh, set up email address uh, um, redirects, but then, you know, the, the submitter addresses are, are definitely getting spammed. Uh, it, go, it goes through our spam filters, obviously. Hmm. And but I think also we are losing a bit of track of the yeah, tracking. No tracking? Uh, yeah. Okay. You can relate. Uh, nobody catches those bounces. Yeah. Uh, unless something changed in the back end since I last looked seven or eight years ago, <laughs> uh, but nobody catches the bounces for NNN-submitter at Debian, uh, Bugs Debian work. So uh, you mail essentially a black hole because the bug tracking system will not, uh, the mail server over there will not uh, deliver that. So it kind of, it's not, not perfect. <laughs> There's a lot of overhead in this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I agree this is now off topic for website tracking, so yeah. I'll talk more about it later, if at all. <laughs> Should have used a smaller room. Yeah, done? Uh, it's already covered. Okay. So more about tracking and social issues about tracking. Not really. Then we close this. Oh. I just want to point out that, um, well, from my point of view, um, the privacy um, statement is one issue, and uh, um, how you actually do the tracking, or whether you do the tracking, and whether you record IP addresses is another issue, or how you do it. Uh, actually, the, the different uh, things are the implementation of doing it, and the other thing is like how you um, make it public and how you present it to the public. Uh, what I wanted to say about the, the presenting it to the public is uh, that there are these, uh, there's a Mozilla approach uh, to um, create some privacy icons, which are nice to, can be nice. Um, it's not really final yet, but but they're trying to make some icons. Uh, which will uh, show user easy, easily um, how their data is collected and used on the on the on the site, which could be nice for Debian too. I think I can pa post a, a website URL on the copy in a minute. So, no more comments. Ah, from any go. May, maybe I missed it, uh, but I guess um, uh, I guess it makes sense to state it just to say, um, from what I understand about the social issues, uh, there seems to be a sort of consensus that as long as uh, we don't surprise people by doing something that we don't say we do, uh, we don't consider it controversial to start tracking users if we need it. Okay. Um, that, that seems to be a consensus, and I think that's an important one. I mean, I, I'm, I have yeah. no problem with it, and uh, I was kind of happy to have it stated clearly. Because yeah. And I think we are also mostly out of time, so I take that as a, if there's no, no, good. Final word. Yeah, well, um, just an idea, just thought. Um, we we could well obviously we will have an kind of debconf ants announcement and someone in the 
something in the project news. So um, would it be worth to summarize the idea that it, we might consider tracking users and, well, use that opportunity to ask our users if it's okay, if we also say we will anonymize, anonym, well, you know what I mean, anonymize. your data and well, ju just ask for their opinion? I think Would it be worth an idea? Uh, I think the idea is good and I think what will happen before we actually activate that or if we actually start that, there will be probably an email on Debian project saying so that we are doing so. Well, um, obviously, we, we need to take care that we don't uh, end up <laughs> slash dot with some negative views, but um, yeah. asking users for this might be a good idea, I think. Yeah. Okay, then I would say we've closed the discussion here, and thanks for coming. <laughs>